going after HTC is always hard because everybody knows HTC. As a small company like us, which is Lucid, we build stereo cameras to enhance the experience and mimic human eye behavior. And so when they asked me to speak here, I was thinking about it because VR and AR industry is going through one of the roughest times ever. Because not all of you are having a VR headset on right now, so something is wrong. 90% of all startups which started with me has died. Billions and billions of dollars have invested into that industry. In China itself, in 2016, we saw $11 billion. And in the United States, we saw double or triple that amount. And this year, or even last year, when we talk about technology adoption, it comes with the hype. When Oculus got bought by Facebook, that was the hype year in 2014. We all raised money in that year. Afterwards, you see the valley of delusion, where all the startups die. And that was 2015, 16, maybe not 16, 17, and a little bit this year. So I still believe that there is a future where VR and AR belongs to all of us. And that's why I'm here to tell you a little bit why. <coughs> to give you a little bit more background about why I started this business is my background, I was born in China and raised in Germany. So excuse the strange accent. <laughs> it's not very common to see an Asian dude with a German accent coming to the United States. But when I first came here to study at Berkeley, I wanted to build something which can connect people's worlds together because I had to live with the distance all my life. Growing up in my childhood, my dad was in China, my mom was in Germany. For me to travel that distance at that time, and when I was six years old, was a long, long trip. You know, Nowadays, it takes you, I don't know, 12 hours, 10 hours, something like that. I traveled 14, 15, 16 hours with three stops and that as a kid. I believe VR can solve that pain point because it can put you right there. And that's what HTC has shown, and that's what we are focusing on is to bring that to the consumer. When we started, my co-founder and I, when we met, he wanted to build a robot, that entire thing. And I said, that's gonna take us forever, and it's really expensive too. I believe in robotics, but Starting off with a proof of concept and going into the market to test if there's a value you can add was more important to me at that point. And so we decided to, you know, to rip off the eyes of the robot and build just a camera with it where people can capture the experiences the same way they see the world, which is in 180 3D. We were against the market because everyone else was like, hey, why are you pitching me 180? 360 is a bigger number. It's much better. And so after I got kicked out, out of 500 VC meetings, where I said, I do 180, and they say, we don't believe in 180, I, I no longer listen to you, I created a new category, which is called VR 180, which Google, Lenovo, HTC, uh, LG, and all of those big guys are following now, launching their own 180 cameras. So surprising. But what I believe when you are building a startup is you have to be delusional. You have to be crazy. You have to go against the stream. Because if there's a market for 360, then why shouldn't be there a market for 180? And that's why we started, because it represents exactly how you see the world. And we have seen those cameras before, too. I mean, like, you know, in the, in the 50s. And they were way cheaper then, right, compared to now. <laughs> and the headsets, too. Like, Oculus sells now for $199, which is great, after they dropped it down from $600. This was $100, much better. When Oculus got acquired, a lot of people started adopting and going into that space and trying to create the headset display. But the problem, what they didn't see was, where's the content and why should people adopt it? Why should people wear a headset, which is a little bit painful, to be honest, right? Me as a VR enthusiast still give that away. 
But the thing is, like, without the content, you will not convince anybody to put it on. And so we started researching what is so important. Is it for you, you know, if you are not a gamer, would you put it on for two hours to play games? I guess not. If you are not a developer, would you put this on to see something you have developed in 3D? I, I don't think. And so when I broke it down into the no, normal people like us, I believe that I will put it on to see my mom who is right now in Germany. And that's how the market started evolving, breaking down into content, hardware distribution, software platforms, and what we wanted to focus on is connecting people closer. And over the last couple of years, if you see and look at the trends, right, you went from the analog era to a digital era to the wearable era. What is next for the content creation side where you can create new content which can be viewed? And most of the content, to be honest with you, on Facebook or the content you want to share, the content you call your dad for, like, hey, check this out, that's my baby, is the content you shoot with your own mobile phones. And so I want to empower everybody of you to be able to do that as well. Okay. In the last couple years, a lot of investment have happened. And unfortunately, some of, most of them are already not around anymore. But it went through multiple verticals from B2B to B2C applications. And I still believe VR belongs to everybody. And if you guys seen the movie Ready Player One, I truly believe in that future which we can achieve together. But I believe in the future where VR is not just virtual, but it's created by people like us. To come to some of the challenges which people are still facing. First, people believe VR is gaming. It's not. People don't want to put the headset on. That's a hard one. That's a real rough one. And people are still trying to figure out how to solve that. And we have already found a solution which will go to the next level with that. You need an infrastructure like 5G to make it happen because sharing data, the big amount of stream of data is really hard at this point. And you have to have some technical expertise at the beginning to be able to plug it in until you know, HTC and Oculus finally released something which didn't need a cable and a big computer. So we want user-generated content to solve that problem. We believe the more people create content, the better it is. Because you will be your own individual evangelist. You will be calling the people for us and not us pushing you to wear headsets. You will call your daughter, your cousins, your wife, your dad, your mom to wear that headset or to see what you have captured. And so we want to be on that side where we can enable you to do amazing ideas like film or capture your own space to rent it out, to film something interesting how your kid is growing up, to film something when you are traveling and you want to take those experiences and send them to the United States when you are in India. Those kind of experiences is what I believe is compelling about VR. And that's why we do this business. And of course, any memory you have where you can go into first person perspectives of when you first said yes to your wife, and I hope it was a great yes, when you saw your kid running around for the first time. Those are the experiences we want to create with you. And of course, those experiences on YouTube, we will never avoid, but that will be given to you. What we can create with the technology we have captured and we have developed over the last years, we turned the company within two and a half years profitable with raised only $3 million and with three offices worldwide. And now we are bringing the technology to the next level, which is headset independent. We have created a holographic display and an application where we're combining everything in one phone. That means you no longer need to wear headsets to see VR. You will be able to see it just in a phone and you will be able to create it on a phone because that's the le lesson we learned from our customers who gave us feedback. Because 90% of all content creation has moved into a phone. How many of you have sta standalone cameras with you right now? There you go. Two of them. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. <laughs>